Hi folks, how are you doing? Been digging through my old notes and studies uh, and I found this one really caught my eye and I thought I'd share it with you if you have a couple minutes. And it's a very important one and it's uh, the very center of our Christian faith and that is the resurrection. Is it fact or is it fantasy? Uh, we're confronted that with that uh, by people in the world that question our faith and think that we are um, Looney Tunes or something. Um, but uh, let's look at this briefly and uh, hopefully, hopefully you can glean something from it. The Apostle Paul stated in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, If Christ has not been raised, then our preaching is in vain and your faith is in vain. That's verse 14. If the first Christians had not believed that Christ rose from the dead, there would have been no church and no New Testament. By the same token, neither would there have been a Christendom nor Western civilization. Such characteristic features of the modern world as the emancipation of women, the abolition of slavery, universal education, public care of the sick and infirmary, provision of welfare services for the old and young are the direct products of Christianity. They didn't exist before. They might well have come in other ways and under different auspices, but if we are dealing with facts and not with might-have-beens, we must recognize that these and other social reforms have come about primarily because a group of Jews 2,000 years ago, became convinced that Jesus of Nazareth had risen from the dead. If Christianity had been founded merely on the moral teaching of Jesus, it would no doubt have flourished for a short time as a well-meaning deviation from Orthodox Judaism. It would quickly have lost its identity amid the innumerable varieties of religion and philosophy which occupied the minds of the ancient and present world. No more can we attribute the conviction of the first Christians that Christ had risen from some kind of wish fulfillment. They were not expecting the resurrection, and when it happened, they dismissed the report of it as an idle tale, as in Luke 24, verses 11 and 12. There was a time when miracles were dismissed on the grounds that they violated the laws of nature. Nowadays, we are much more cautious. We recognize that the laws of nature are merely what we have been able to establish as a normal way things happen in such fields of study and human experience as we can investigate. Excuse me. We are, however, more and more conscious of the vast amount that we still do not know, particularly in the relationship between mind and body, or more generally between what, for want of better words, we must call the spiritual and the material. A miracle which involves these two factors may not necessarily break the laws of nature if it takes place in accordance with the higher law or higher order of being than we yet know. Obviously, we cannot prove the truth of a miracle any more than we can prove the existence of God. In these matters, there is no mathematical certainty, and it is no more possible to convince someone who is determined to believe that miracles, including the resurrection, are possible than it is to persuade an atheist by argument of the existence of God. To anyone with an open mind, however, we can talk in terms of reasonable probability, in the sense that if a number of signposts point in the same direction, it is likely that what they point to is in fact there. That's an interesting one. So I hope you glean a little bit from that. Again, this is one of those little snippets of my studies back in the day, and uh, which helps solidify and bring me to faith in Christ.
God bless and have a good day.